red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Do you recognize them? The well-known colors of the spectrum. But Kevin from Cornwall, Ontario wants to know about brown, gray, and pink. And he writes, if brown is a color, why isn't it in the visible light spectrum? Why aren't all colors on the spectrum? Here's physicist Robin Marchbanks from his lab at the University of Toronto. Well, color and perception of color is a very subtle thing. When Newton first took white light and spread it out with a prism to show a rainbow of colors, what he arrayed in that spectrum was a position for every different wavelength, for every different color, every frequency of light. But the way that we perceive it is something different. What we perceive as human beings is according to the receptors that we have in our eyes, which see red, green, and blue. So even though it may be a whole spectrum there, we'll interpret it in terms of how much red, how much green, and how much blue there is there. And that's much the same way as how a camera works, which is why video cameras work for human beings, because they also will record red, blue, and green, basically to match the perception that we have. So you can have a full color spectrum, but whether it's a human being or a camera that's detecting it, what it will see is a proportion of red, blue, and green. Well, just as we can look at a white light spectrum and see all the colors in it, even though we only detect red, green, and blue with our eyes, we can take those colors, red, green, and blue, and put them together in different ways to make all kinds of different colors. So here what I have is three slide projectors that project the three colors. The blue is fairly pure color, the red one is fairly pure as well, and fairly pure green over here. But as they overlap, you see that blue plus green together gives you a different color, the cyan color that's here. Red plus green together give the yellow color down below. And red plus blue together give the magenta color that you see at the left. But all three of those colors as they overlap give a white spot in the center. Now if we subtract one of those colors, if we take out, for instance, the red, then that white spot turns cyan. If instead we subtract the blue, that white spot turns yellow. If we subtract the green, that white spot turns magenta. And so there are three colors that in a certain sense are white light subtract certain colors. And there are these other primaries, the cyan, magenta, and yellow, that are the colors that are used in inkjet printers. Inkjet printers use subtractive primary colors. So just as we mixed on the screen and had white light, if we subtracted red, we got cyan. So cyan is the color that you get from white subtracting red. What I have here is the three colors from an inkjet refill kit. I've got cyan, magenta, and yellow. What I'm going to do is to mix each of these colors up and then try combining them, just as we combined colors of light earlier. So first of all, I mix up some cyan, mix up some magenta, mix up some yellow, and then if I mix these together in another beaker, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of magenta, and finally a little bit of cyan. The color that we get in the end is very nearly black. So whether I mix three different colors of light together, red, blue, and green, to get white in the end, or if I mix three subtractive colors, subtractive pigments together in an inkjet printer, cyan, magenta, and yellow, to get black, Either way, what I can do is mix the proportions of those to get any color that I'm interested in having, including brown. Do you have any colorful questions for us? Here's how to send them in and get some answers.